Hey, Tourpreneurs, it's Mitch Bach. And just a quick note before we begin today's episode, Tourpreneur is currently sponsored by Google. We're thankful for their support of our community, and we are offering with them a completely free course helping you unlock the power and potential of Google's Things to Do program, which is specifically helping tour operators add their tours to Google in new ways that gives you new exposure and more direct bookings. To learn more, go to tourpreneur.com slash Google. And as always, show notes, more resources, links to our newsletter, our business coaching community, and so much more are available on tourpreneur.com. Now to the episode. Today's episode is brought to you by Checkfront, the booking platform trusted by over 5,000 tour and activity operators around the world. You can start your own free 21-day trial over at Checkfront.com. Welcome to the Tourpreneur Podcast. Travel industry veteran Shane Whaley will take you on a journey with fellow tourpreneurs, sharing their tips, ideas, insights, and success stories to inspire you to make your tour business the best it can be. And now, here is your host, Shane Whaley. And welcome to episode 86, Matt Marbury of OBX Ghost Tours. How are you, Matt? Doing well. How are you doing today, Shane? Excited to speak to you. I, I was just, uh, <laughs> I realized OBX is out of banks. Uh, and I'm thinking it was some kind of ghost acronym or something, you know, like ectoplasm, but it's <laughs> OBX out of banks. And I only realized that because I watched your your really cool video that you have telling us more about your ghost tours. I was like, oh yeah, I've, I've avoided a big mistake there. It's out of banks ghost tours. Yeah, it's kind of like a fun inside joke between tourists that have gone there. Um, you know, you'll see people around with uh, OBX on their t-shirts and then, you know, and it's great for me because to create the brand, I didn't really have to think all that hard there's obx dental obx um pizza and so it worked out great so we have obx mystery dinner which is a comedy murder mystery dinner show and we have uh obx ghost tours which is our uh tour arm of our company so what's what's the state of play for the industry at the moment in north carolina with regards to lockdowns so the outer banks just as of yesterday has reopened its beaches um we're still uh, maintaining social distance, but uh, we have been given the go ahead to have groups of no more than 10. So hotels are reopening um, and certain attractions are starting to open. And one of our ticket vendors has done a great job of getting all of the local operators of attractions and tourists and fishing charters together to talk and share ideas of what we can do. Um, so for us personally, we are kind of holding off to see how everything plays out, but we have officially opened the beach as of yesterday, May 17th. Were there any ideas that came out of all the operators coming together that you think would be helpful? A hundred percent. So much great material. So one of the things is we talked about uh, thermometers. And so they highly suggested us ordering uh, non-contact thermometers. And so that way we can check the temperatures of our guests when they arrive to see if they are having a fever or not. So I ordered three of those. Um, Another thing that the vendor said that uh, the ticket vendor is a third party ticket vendor for us said that they will be doing is they will be providing a short survey uh, to find out if where our guests are coming from, if they have contracted COVID at all or had family or anything, and if they're coming from hot spots. So that allows us to know where our guests are coming from, which we always knew, but we never really took too heavy into account. Um, but especially now, though, it's good to know and have a little bit of a history and background of our guests. Uh, another thing we discussed was waivers. Um Did we think that waivers were necessary? And at that moment, we had all agreed that uh, waivers with COVID language may not be a thing yet. But an interesting development at Disney that I noticed and brought to their attention is that they have a – and I actually posted it in the Torpreneur group. uh, Disney has a disclaimer now 
saying that uh, – explaining the risks that are associated with COVID-19 and that by coming to Disney World resorts, you assume all risk and liabilities. And so I mm. said – I brought that to the attention of our attractions and I said, this isn't a waiver, but I think that it will be good language to have, um, not necessarily as a waiver, but – we haven't seen it yet, but I, I do think that frivolous lawsuits will be a thing in the next year or so. Uh, in terms of the survey, what do you think your your third party vendor is going to do? Let's say I rock up there and I've been, you know, I'm living in New York City, which is a hot spot. Are they just going to say, I'm sorry, you can't come on the tour or how is that going to work? They haven't mentioned that at all. Um, they Some of the language was just, um, have you been feeling ill within the last two weeks? Have you uh, been coming from a hot spot? And like I said, we're very limited in the amount of people that we can take anyway, but I have a hard time believing that they would turn away a guest, um, which is why we also are going to have thermometers so we can check when they're there on site. Now, of course, so they could be asymptomatic, but you know, just prevention as much as possible. But what, what are you going to do if someone has a high temperature What's your policy? Well, how are you going to react to that? So I I have been – that's part of the reason why I wanted to wait to reopen. Um, we did actually mm. just get our first sale um, of the entire season this morning. Fantastic. Um, Good. But our, <laughs> our guy – Is it local or was it – where no, was the it, booking from? Um, that is a great question. Let me actually check because that is something good to know. So Fair Harbor is not showing me. It's a 980 area code. So I would be – interested to know that let me do a quick google search here all live it's all good charlotte charlotte north carolina so north carolina. um pretty pretty domestic um that's that charlotte's probably about six hours away from us um same, same, so. <laughs> i love that i love that i'm sorry as a brit when you say it's domestic six hours it's like yeah you know in, in europe that's like one that's, that's like going into the into russia you know it's from london sorry it, no, it's a it's a funny culture. They're like they're like, oh, I haven't seen my dad in in a year. Oh, how far away does he live? An hour drive. <laughs> that's our that's our work commute for a lot of us. So if we personally had a a guest that you know was showing a spike of temperature, we would immediately apologize and just say, for the safety of yourself and our other guests, we're not going to be able to take you on this tour. Um, we will be refunding you your purchase, and I will probably try to give them a credit for a future tour just to kind of save face because no one wants to be told, Hey, you know, thanks for taking all this time to come out and see us. We're not taking you though. Um, and that's part of the reason I'm holding off on, on doing these stories as well. Cause I kind of want to see what some of the larger leaders do first. Yeah. See, my concern about it is how that person responds to you. Can you get sued for not taking them? Right? Because there's some kind of discrimination there. Are they going to physically jump on your bus, or I don't know, you're a walking tour, but just for argument's sake, are they just not going to go away? And you know, how much power do you have? Authority do you have as a as a tourpreneur with someone who would react negatively? And and that's what I would like to see answered. I mean, you just call up the police and say, "Hey, this has happened. Guys, causing trouble." I mean, it's it's a tricky one, isn't it? And that's why I am taking that chance to not reopen. And, and a big thing is our guides don't feel comfortable yet. A majority of our guides, uh, we have two of them that are that said, you know, put me on the schedule. I'm ready to go. But I, it, it, with only being able to take nine people right now, just the risk for me is not worth the reward. And I'm already seeing um, down in uh, Charleston, no Savannah, sorry, Savannah, Georgia. We're already seeing the groups start going the, the the walking tours again so i'm interested to just see how it plays out and i honestly i'm 2020 to me is just going to be a wash it i was fortunate and was able to get out of all of my advertising costs and really lower my business expenses but i'm really using this time to kind of plan for a bigger 2021 um because even if i did try to go gung-ho the sales aren't there um, people aren't going to be confident necessarily to come out, even if I offer more tour times. Yeah, and it's quite early, isn't it? And certainly in the United States, I think you're one of the first to open up beaches, aren't you? Yes, and um, a friend of mine I used to work on Disney Cruise Line, he's in Australia, and he was poking fun saying, well, apparently the U.S. found the cure and everything because they're reopening up. Way to go, guys. Um, and I, I do think that we're opening a little 
early. Um, I also work in the theme park industry as well in Orlando, Florida, and that's where I'm based out of. And so I'm kind of trying to take their lead um, to see what they're doing. Granted, we're, we're not going to have anywhere near the amount of guests that they do. But as far as safety regulations, I know that they're going to keep that very close in their head. I, I put it this way. I would not want to be a politician right now. I wouldn't want to be a governor. I wouldn't want to be a mayor. I know. I <laughs> just no. think these big decisions. And and also, you know, they get attacked from both sides. Our governor, governor here in Vermont, you know, he's either attacked for opening too quick or not opening quick enough. And you just think, wow, you know, he's listening to the health experts. We actually have a decent governor who listens to our medical and experts and scientists and is making decisions based on that. But still, he can't win. No, and I don't think anyone can. I mean, I made a post yesterday about trying to buy directly when possible uh, instead of just buying from Amazon. And mm. someone made a political. And I said, I am just trying to tell people to purchase directly with small businesses. There was nothing political about this. I try to stay yeah. away from politics as much as possible. Um, and people just want to pull you into it. Um, it's a shame. They do. They do. So you were – just to uh, change tracks here a little bit. So you were saying you're working on 2021 plans. How have you been spending your time? What have you been learning uh, in order to come back stronger? Definitely. So just like you, um, I took a hospitality, tourism, and management course through Florida Atlantic University. Um, one of the things that I did was I created a Facebook group for people that were taking the course to use as a networking Clever. tool. Um, and I actually got to speak with the professor that started that, Dr. Peter Ritchie. So that was uh, really nice. And uh, we're also taking my wife and I a free course from the University of Southern Florida on post-crisis leadership. Um, and that starts here in two days. So that will be running from May oh. 20th through July. Uh, I'm also using this time to create some new products for us in 2021. One of my goals is to – and this is a lengthy goal, but I'm still going to make it a goal of mine. I would like to double our revenue in 2021 to make what we have missed out on on 2020. Uh, one of those – one of the ways I'm going to do that is I'm creating new tours. So literally right now, um, a director from a theme park, Bush Gardens, Williamsburg and Legoland, Florida, I had worked with. He's a freelance director. He and I are working to create a interactive pirate experience. So it will be scavenger hunt nice. meets escape room meets walking tour. And so uh, that script is supposed to be done in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I was slating it for a 2020 opening, but it looks like we'll be doing that in 2021. And I am also mm -hmm. in the early stages of trying to create a Wright Brothers interpretation tour as well. Uh, we have the Wright Brothers uh, Memorial here in uh, Outer Banks. And so I would like to create a, sort of a Colonial Williamsburg feel there. So that is – and in the early stages of that, talking with the uh, company that owns the license for the Wright Brothers, uh, but also I'm going to have to apply for a commercial use authorization with the National Park Service. Well, I really would love to chat to you uh, after you've been through all of that because I know you'll have a ton of learnings for your fellow tourpreneurs who also want to create new products and they, they've got these hurdles to, to navigate as well. I think that'd be a great episode for the show. I guess the question I have for you very quickly is, is I love the idea of, of the pirate themed experience. How do you know there'll be demand for that? Since we run multiple attractions already in the Outer Banks, we have a very great customer base. Um, our email list is very active. Um, I on purpose have two email lists, one of our most active users and one of just everyone that has ever subscribed. And so with that, the, I'm fortunate that there is a very limited amount of attractions in the Outer Banks. It is not like Myrtle Beach where there is a bunch of things to do. And so I, I can't tell you confidently that there will be a huge demand for it, but I'm able to piggyback off of the ad spend that we already do. So the – OBX Ghost Tours, we're working on rebranding it to the OBX Walking Tours. And so then that way I can already utilize the ads that we already purchase for the Ghost Tours and I can put more products on there. So the investment side on the overhead is very minimal. Another question I have for you. So you, you're talking about having the non-contact thermometers. And then I read that you also have ghost detectors. 
Yes. <laughs> um, so we use EMF detectors, <laughs> which are electromagnetic field detectors. Um, Love it. They are commonly used on paranormal investigating television shows, and we always tell pe- we always tell people uh, if it goes off, that means one of two things: one, there's paranormal activity in the area, or two, you're standing near an electric box. So uh, <laughs> it, it, it's a very fun. Um, part of our tour uh when i first yeah. came to the outer banks there was already a ghost tour here but it was more of an interpretation but they didn't really do ad spend i saw that their groups their group sizes were small and so i knew that they there there was a lot more room in the market for it but i wanted to differentiate our tour from theirs and so that was how i did it and so when people That's want fun. a costume tour i suggest they go to the other tour company uh if they want to do one where they can hold a ghost detector then come to ours. Do those things work? You can tell us here on Torpreneur because I watch those shows sometimes. I'm like, is, is that a gimmick or is, do those detectors really work? So uh, the EMF detectors that we have, I I fully believe they trace electromagnetic fields. If I'm near an electric box, right. it goes off. If I put my cell phone up to it, it goes off. So usually when it right. does go off, we tell people, we'll tell you if there's something that would give it what we call a false reading. Um, but if there's not a false reading in the area, we go ahead and say, Go ahead and take pictures so that we're not trying to pull wool over anybody's eyes. And I think it's funny because sometimes I tell them, oh, there's an electric box there. That's what set it off. And it disappoints them. They want it to work so bad. Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. But they also know, though, that when we say that, you know, oh, there's nothing here that would give it a read. They know that we're not. Uh, lying. And we had an electrician actually. Yeah. It was funny. An electrician was on the tour once and he says that he'll use those to see if there's a live wire. And so he said, I was impressed that you guys actually took the time to to point out, oh, there might be a grounded wire here, as you can see from this light pole. So he said it was it was kind of fun to see it used in that way. Well, on this call, I'm not going to ask you if you've seen any ghost, ghosts, but I will do on our full deep dive, I'll, I'll talk to you about that. Um, on our Facebook group, which I recommend everybody join, you can find that at tourpreneur.com forward slash Facebook. Th- there were two questions you asked fairly recently. I was wondering how you got on with them. One was you were asking for advice on AdWords. Did you did you read up on that or did you do any courses on that? How did I, it look for you? I haven't yet. I am going to be doing uh, – because Google offers a free Google AdWords certification. So that is on my right. list of things to do. Um, so I haven't done that quite yet, but I did ask the group. Um, I, you know, I know that Google offers to do your AdWords certification with them. Um, and a big thing that I noticed a lot of the other tourpreneurs said was that Google will over uh, – will make it just so that it hits – Google's whole goal is to get paid. And so they said that yeah. they might make your Google AdWords in a way that will show a lot of clicks but maybe not have a lot of conversions. And so that was good to hear because I was trying to take the easy way out. You know, If you, um, yeah. the, if you don't know how to do something properly, it's a lot easier – easier to get someone else to do it. But in this case, I will be taking the time. I think it'll be worth the investment of my time and money, which is nothing (laughs) to take that course. Well, I have to say, I just typed in uh, Outer Banks Ghost Tours and and you come up as the third, but the first actual ghost tour company. There's the outerbanks.org that comes up first and second, but you're there in third place. I can see you've got your uh, Google My Business listing there as well. So you're pretty well represented on for that search term anyway. And OuterBanks.org is our CVB. So, and I'm, and I have an ad with them. So that's good. And they're going to be hard to beat. Finally, before I, before I let you go, you also asked about t-shirts. You were doing print on demand. Did you get anywhere with that? Yes. Oh, that was phenomenal. So I did a campaign that we called uh, within our group tour and a tea. Um, you know, the virtual tour has obviously been a hot topic and a hot, uh, hot thing to do right now, but especially listening to the tourpreneur episode where you had the seven questions that you ask yourself, is this worth doing for me? I decided it wasn't, um, part of it is I'm based in Orlando, so it's hard for me to go up there and do the video myself. Uh, I could obviously have gotten my guides to do it for me, but I just, I, I, it didn't feel right for our clientele. And so we did a 
t-shirt fundraising campaign. And if guests bought a t-shirt for $20, they would get a free ghost tour when we reopen. Um, and then nice. in the case of people that are, cause I had friends that also, uh, had purchased t-shirts to support us. And I know they won't be going to the outer banks. I'll be doing, cause I do Santa Claus at Christmas time. I'll be doing virtual Santa call for them in lieu of a tour, but we raised between gift cards and t-shirts a thousand dollars. Um, and that's wow. going to pay. Yes, it's huge. Um, the campaign ended a couple days ago and those t-shirts are being printed off now. And that's going to pay for my workers comp, uh, policy, which is one of our larger, uh, costs that we still have to pay even with not being open. And so that was a big relief. Absolutely. Congratulations on that. And, and who printed the t-shirts for you? Which company was that? Custom Inc. And so I was able to go through design right on Custom Inc.'s website. Uh, you know, you could get a graphic designer if you'd like to, but I was able to throw something together pretty well on their platform. It, and, and I think a big rule with t-shirts that people need to remember is if you're not willing to wear it, your guests aren't going to be willing to wear it. And so I tried to make a design that I would enjoy to wear. And I think it worked out pretty well. And so we have, it, it's kind of a nice motivation. I'm like, well, I can't close down the company because I have to give these tours out. These people are expecting this. And yeah. um, so I'm excited to that that went over so well. And we, it, I only, I only spent $20. I did I did uh, an email out to our active email list and then I boosted our Facebook post for 10 bucks. That's it. That's it. Nice. Who are you using for your email uh, software? MailChimp. Yeah. So yeah, I use MailChimp as of right now, especially with our active email list. It's free. And that's part of the reason why I made that more active group because in tight times like this, I, it, it's very cheap to do that. Brilliant. If you're up for it, I've, I've been asked by our listeners to host a roundtable on email marketing. So I'm looking for some, because you know, I'm all about entrepreneurs who've got experience in that field. And I would love to invite you back on. We can find some others and have a good discussion about what you've learned about email marketing, best practices, etc. I'd love to host an episode with you on that. Yeah, I would. I would love to do that. Also, you referred to Jessica Hammer's episode, the seven questions she asked herself before deciding whether to uh, produce a virtual tour. And our listeners can find that at tourpreneur.com forward slash 77. You can find the show notes for today's show at tourpreneur.com forward slash 86. Uh, Matt, thank you very much for coming on the show for just a quick check in. I'm, I'm really excited to have a full deep dive with you. This, I have so many questions in my head that I want to ask you, but I want to be respectful of your time. And these are check ins right now. So, yeah, thank you, Shane. And it's a pleasure. And like I told you earlier, this is a fantastic resource. And I share it with everyone that I know that can benefit from it. Thank you. And to our listeners, if you enjoyed today's show or any of our shows, if you could help us out by leaving a rating and review on the podcast app that you use, whether it be Apple, etc., that they, they really help uh, spread the word for the show. Matt, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Torpreneur podcast. Be sure to visit torpreneur.com to join the conversation and access the show notes, including links to the resources mentioned on today's episode. This is Torpreneur.